I'm doing a speed test. But why am I doing a speed test? Well, it's all to find out if VPNs really slow down your connection. And look at that. Or should I say, let's get into it. Okay, VPNs. They're great. They secure your connection, they allow you to access tons of new content, and they all do it at the cost of slowing down your internet connection, right? Well, the nature of how a virtual private network works would lead you to believe that. I mean, you are connecting to a remote server, making your connection travel further than if you were without a VPN. Today, I want to find out if a VPN will slow down my internet connection, and if it does, then by how much? But before I can do any testing, I need to know the main factors that can impact VPN speeds. And to help me with that, I've decided to invite a special guest. Hi guys, I'm Justus, and I'm one of the lead people behind the development of Surfshark VPN. That's right, I got one of the leads behind Surfshark to help me find out what factors can really impact VPN internet speeds. So what is one of the first factors that comes to your mind? One of the first things that come to mind is probably the distance of servers. For example, the distance between the, your location and the server that you're trying to connect. So say if I'm connecting from, I don't know, uh, New York and I'm connecting to Tokyo, Japan, my internet speed should be in theory lower than if I were connecting to New York or Detroit or something like that that's within the US border. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. If we would talk about other factors that may have a negative impact for VPN speeds, it could be the protocol that you're using. Uh, for example, nowadays, uh, the golden standard for protocols is probably WireGuard protocol because it's slight weight, it's fast, it's reliable, it's also secure, but there are other protocols, um, for example, OpenVPN protocol, which on the other hand is a bit slower because it has a different code base and it may have a negative impact on your VPN speeds. Okay, so protocols, what else? Uh, well, there are also some general rules that apply to any usage of internet. So one of those is uh, the type of connection that you're using. For example, you can use wired connection and you can use wireless connection. And as we all probably know, the wired connection is in most cases at least uh, much faster and also it's more uh, reliable. Yeah, because at home I actually get 30% uh, higher speeds while using my ethernet connection yeah. because uh, my Wi-Fi I believe is on 2.4 gigahertz so it's due to the interference it is slightly slower and I was wondering can a device the type of device that you're using impact your internet connection yeah if we go back to the protocols for example uh, and talking about the open VPN protocol it uh, uses more system resources and it may have also an impact not only on the VPN connection but also on the behavior of, of your device. So Yusti, what do you think? I have three devices today. I have uh, my Android phone, I have a MacBook and I have a pretty old router. Which one of the three you think is going to perform the best in terms of speed? Well, I would probably bet on the MacBook. Obviously. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll see that. So stay tuned. Anyway, do stay. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. And uh, time to get to testing. All right, so from what Eustace told me, I know a bit more about some of the factors that can really impact VPN speeds. My next step now is to do a lot of testing and see how different devices, VPN servers, and protocols compare. Since Eustace mentioned that devices can have an effect on speed, I will be testing three devices in total which will represent three different categories, depending on raw power. First is my M1 MacBook laptop, which I will title as the high-end device. Simply put it, it has the most powerful processor out of the three, running the M1 chip. Second is my Android phone. It's several years old and has a mobile Snapdragon 730 processor. Not bad, but definitely not amazing either. I'll label this as our mid-range device. And finally, for my low-end device, I chose the TP-Link Archer C7 running OpenWRT firmware. You may remember it from my WireGuard router video. It has just 128 megs of RAM and an Ethereos QCA9558 processor. This thing is literally less powerful than a desktop CPU from 20 years ago. 
Now, all three devices should in theory have the same speeds when no VPN is being connected. So keep in mind that I am paying for a 100 megabit up and down connection. So let's get to testing. Okay, so my first test will be just with no VPN connected at all. So yeah, goodbye Surfshark and let's get to testing. Okay, let's bring up the first round of results. As expected, the speeds on all three devices were pretty much the same when the VPN is turned off. But now, let's connect to the VPN and run the test again. I will be connecting to the fastest location while using the WireGuard protocol. And in case you didn't know, you can change your protocol by going to settings, VPN settings, and here it is. So as you can see for me, Surfshark determined that Lithuania location is the fastest, which makes sense since that's where we are right now. Well, both the MacBook and the Android phone performed excellent in this test, barely dropping any speed compared to no VPN enabled. The router with the WireGuard protocol also performed quite okay, though that weak CPU does need to work quite a bit harder to encrypt our connection. For the next test, I'll stick with the WireGuard protocol, but instead of connecting to the fastest location, I'll connect somewhere really, really far away from my actual place where I am right now. This will showcase a scenario where you may need to connect to a specific VPN server because perhaps you can only access certain content from there from that country or location. So since we're here in Europe, let's connect to Tokyo, Japan, since it's over 5,000 miles away. I'll be honest, I am really, really surprised. For all three devices, speed dropped by around 7%. And considering how far Japan is from Lithuania, it's really not a bad result. I mean, think about it, we're connecting to another side of the world. But let's now switch gears or should I say switch protocols? Because now we're going to test the open VPN protocol while connected to Tokyo, Japan. Well, the tests are done, so let's review. Our MacBook did surprisingly okay. We got pretty much the same download speed as with the WireGuard protocol. However, our upload speeds were completely smashed. Only 14 megabits while using OpenVPN, which is almost six times slower compared to WireGuard. The Android phone, on the other hand, did quite fine with both the download and upload speeds averaging in the low to mid 80s. But the worst of all was our poor router. Using the OpenVPN protocol, it only got around 10 megabits on both download and upload. That's literally nine to 10 times slower compared to using WireGuard. Anyway, I think it's now a good time to talk about the conclusion of this video. Does a VPN slow down your speeds? Well, as much as I would like to give you a yes or no answer, the reality is that it depends. It appears that if you are running a device that has a decent processor and if you are using a location that is relatively close to your actual location, you will be fine. The concern lies whether you're using a low power device such as a router or an Amazon Fire TV stick. The solution here is simple. Use the WireGuard protocol when possible. On a Fire TV stick, that's no problem since you can change the protocol right from the settings menu. However, if you are stuck on a router that can only use an OpenVPN protocol, well, then the problem becomes more apparent since you cannot change your protocol as easily. And that is why I highly recommend upgrading your router or updating it with custom firmware since it will open up the ability to use other protocols like WireGuard. Obviously, sometimes slower VPN speeds are unavoidable because you need to connect to a location that's really, really far away. In my testing, even while connected to Japan, my speeds did not drop by much. And the last thing to point out is that VPNs can help with ISP throttling. It's a topic of its own, but to put it simply, ISPs can actually throttle your speeds and make them slower. Personally, I'm lucky to not experience that, but ISP throttling is a much, much more common issue in countries like the US and Canada. So again, that's an area where a VPN can even provide better speeds than if you were not using it. And hey, if you are looking for a VPN, then why not try Surfshark? It recently achieved something that is totally unique, which is 100 VPN countries to connect to in total. 
So if you are interested, use the code SHARKTUBE to get two months for free or use the link in the description, which will also take you to the order page. But that'll be all for this video. In the comments, let me know, are you guys getting good speeds while connected to the VPN? And if you like this video, then go check out this video right here, which is quite an old one, but it's still relevant tutorial where I show you how you can increase your VPN speeds in case yours are slow. But that is all for me. Take care.